One of the questions I got sometimes about um, YubiKey and how you use your YubiKey is why sometimes some services require me only to touch my YubiKey and sometimes I need to type a pin and then touch my YubiKey. And is the touch of the YubiKey something like a fingerprint control or is simple a uh, touch? So if you never used a YubiKey before and you are about to buy one and you are curious about this thing, this is probably the first question came into mind. And this is one of the most common questions people ask me when uh, they ask me for the basic functionality of this thing. Well, the answer is really simple. Let's suppose you have your Microsoft account uh, and you configure your YubiKey as a second factor authentication. So it, this is uh, an account, it's Microsoft, but it works um, always the same, uh, the same way. I'm using my username and password to log in. Now, since I've configured my Microsoft account, uh, this my, uh, some Microsoft account to use my key for logging in, I can press sign in option and I can say use a face fingerprint pin on security key. So I'm uh, telling my Microsoft account uh, want to be used by uh, what is called passkey. So it's some sort of cryptographic um, key stored somewhere. And okay, it finds that I have a YubiKey. So I type my pin and I press okay. And now I need to physically touch my key and I'm in. So basically it asked me a pin and a touch for one reason. I am logged in, I'm logging in into my account with only my key. So if I only need my key to log in to my system, it need to require me the pin. Because if a threat model exists where I am losing the key, someone is gonna find my key and I didn't have time to remove my key from all of my account, an attacker can take my key, plug into his computer and just log in as with my identity. So if you are using your key to log in a single factor of authentication, you need the pin. And the pin is important because the firmware of this thing is made secure. So if you type for eight times the wrong pin, the credential inside the key are destroyed. So you can be you can be sure that no one is gonna to uh, find the pin. You, you surely you don't need to take your birthday as a pin because it could be a problem. But if you choose a pin that is secure, the attacker has only eight tentatives. So whenever you are using your key as a single factor of authentication, you need to type the key. Now let's do another example. I've configured a Google account not with a pass key for single authentication. So I've configured my key as a second factor of authentication. So I type my username and then I'm typing your my password. So I've already logged in my system. I've typed my username and password. And now the key is used only as a second factor of authentication. So I can plug in my USB port, touch the key and I'm in. Okay. So if the key is used only as a second factor of authentication because I've already typed my username and password, there is no need to require the PIN because it will be an unnecessary extra layer of security. So if an attacker get my key, it, he need to know my username and password and then touch the key. So it can be, the security can be relaxed. And when a key is used only as a second factor authentication, it means you already entered your username and password or other authentication method, mechanism. If the key is used for second factor, you can only touch the key. And the final question is, is the touch part of the YubiKey something like a fingerprint scanner? No, it's not. It's only a, a physical button that check if someone pressed the key. And it has one purpose. Let's suppose you have your key always plugged in to, into your USB port of your computer. This is the most common scenario. You can have the nano key or you can have in your workstation a key like this always plugged in. Okay. And let's suppose that an attacker was able to somewhat take control of your machine. Maybe an attacker tricked you into run some software. If the software is able to access the USB key, it can be used to activate the key for doing bad thing. So to prevent this, the physical touch of the key 
it's uh, ensure the software that there is a person that acknowledge the fact that some software is actually asking to execute a cryptographic operation on this key. And so the touch means that a physical operator acknowledge the fact that some cryptographic operation should be done. Now, let's uh, examine the situation in which some attacker gain control of your computer. Uh, they can check that you have a SSH key inside your YubiKey and can access the YubiKey to access some remote server. But the keys start flashing, requiring a user to acknowledge the operation. So if you didn't start any cryptographic operation that required your YubiKey, you will usually not touch your YubiKey if it starts flashing because the usual question is, which software is requiring a touch of my, uh, from a YubiKey? And if you don't touch your YubiKey in a short time, the operation failed. So you can try, you can, uh, you can use your key for doing some cryptographic operation like PGP. You start the operation, the key starts flashing, you, uh, you wait for some seconds and if you not press the key, the key, the operation fail and the key stop flashing. So avoiding the risk in which a software can start a cryptographic operation and stay for a long time waiting for your touch, hoping that for some reason you touch the, the key in a wrong way. So this is not anything, it, it has anything to do with fingerprint scanner. It simply require a physical user to acknowledge the touch and acknowledge that some software is gonna require a cryptographic operation. There are other version of uh, YubiKey or other um, other uh, supplier of uh, key like this for FIDO2 operation that have fingerprint scanner on it. And um, is this uh, an extra layer of protection? And usually uh, the fingerprint scanner on a physical key is used to replace the pin. So instead of typing the pin when you're using your key as single authentication factor, you can simply put your finger on it and it's uh, an extra protection. But for my opinion, the pin is much, much more secure because fingerprint can be forged. It's not easy, but it can be done. And a pin cannot be forged if you choose a secure pin and uh, you just keep into your mind and on a secure place. So usually fingerprint scanner on hardware key is not a thing that I really looking for in my devices. But in some scenario where you want to your user to have the minimum friction possible to use some security key, Yubico has the Bio Series key. Uh, they are like um, this one. I don't have one to uh, to show you live using, but it's really the very same key. It has basically the very same uh, characteristic. Uh, but the really change is you can use your fingerprint to touch the key instead of requiring a pin. So you got this key, you record your fingerprint on it, and that's it. You can take your uh, pin always with you, you can plug in your computer, and when you wanna log in, you just touch, and the touch get uh, has two purposes. The first one is the physical touch like this to verify that there's a human that confirmed the operation, but the fingerprint sensor don't, does not require you to type a pin. So it's even easier to use than this kind of key. And if you have a large enterprise and you have a lot of user, maybe this kind of key gives you the most frictionless experience in using a strong way of authenticating with an hardware key. So it can be an option. And this concludes this brief video in which I explained to you why sometimes uh, your key requires you to type a pin and sometimes you just only need to touch the key. And uh, I've also explained a little bit why the touch, the physical touch is required for the operation. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.